Well, we are getting to the final stages of the Manuel Ugate deal, guys. And guess what? It's really gonna happen, according to Fabrizio Romano. And Eric Ten Hag is gonna have to speak about Kobe Mainu and how he's really transforming into a player that he really wants to be really getting into the club of Manchester United. And it has been a hint on as to why Manchester United have gone ahead to find themselves in a proper position to obviously hire Manuel Ugate and why Casimiro is expected to be second fiddle after the signature of Manuel Ugate. Welcome to this channel. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. We thank God for the gift of life, the Muslims, Barak Laufikum, and may the living to God bless you and place you abundantly. The Muslims, may Allah bless you abundantly because you people are really Allah said. After the loss to Brighton yesterday, it really looked like Manchester United are really pushing hard and 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 hard to obviously get into what they really want to get in here. And the push for Manuel Ugate is still on. I told you after that game of Brighton that Man United are really gonna push hard to sign Manuel Ugate. Reason being reason being that all that is required at Manchester United is to get in Manuel Ugate, nothing else. I tell you, that is it. Because at least all the departments are really okay, you get, are really okay, and the side, um, there is something I'm looking for here. Um, so, Manchester United are looking in for what we call a CDM. If you watch that game very well, you obviously got to know that we are really very porous into the midfield and that's why Manuel Ugate should be sealed as soon as possible. And I believe that maybe Monday or Tuesday, it might be a here we go day and then we'll find ourselves in a proper position to get in Manuel Ugate at the club of Manchester United. And I think as we play against Liverpool, yeah, when, when are we playing against Liverpool? Let me check here. Is it Sunday? Is it Saturday? Let me check because this is the guy we need to be into that midfield as you're playing against Liverpool. I know he hasn't gone ahead to play very many games, but I tell you what, it's really urgent and imminent. <laughs> that is it. So let me check. When are we playing Liverpool? Liverpool, Manchester United, big game of the weekend. Um, mm, all right, it's gonna be a Sunday. Now, if it's gonna be a Sunday, that is the 1st of September. All we know is that Manchester United can do the due diligence to get this deal done and dusted. If he arrives here on Tuesday, you know, he'll train on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And obviously, he'll have to compete for a position to get into the team of Manchester United. That is Manuel Ugate for you. So, as it stands for me, I believe this deal should obviously come into the mix. Because it's now going to have to shift from the loan push to the permanent push and obviously united have a very huge goal in there for you now fabrizio romano told us yesterday tomorrow in the morning that manuel ugate only waiting for Manchester united and their final green light as his plan is clear since end of july no bids for atalanta midfielder ederson fully focused only on one step so he's waiting for Manchester united this is the best well the best known secret about this deal that he's really waiting for Manchester united and the most important attribute that has going to have been thrown today is all about this fabrizio Rohan has said man united are set to close manuel ugate deal and it can be and it can be now it can be now permanent transfer if all goes to plan with scott mctominay to napoli Man United will proceed with permanent move for Ugate as PSG wanted. Ugate only wants Manchester United. He's ready to travel. Now, <clears throat> let's call a spade a spade, right? Let's call a spade a spade right now. Because the side of Manuel Ugate is really very positive And they want to join the club of Manchester United. Now, PSG has always gone ahead to delay this deal. And I've always gone ahead to let you know that uh, there is uh, the egoistic owners of Manchester United and the egoistic owner of PSG, these two are like, you have to dance to my tools. And now, PSG, however much they had gone ahead of obviously negotiate a loan, they were pushing so much for a permanent deal that we want a permanent deal to obviously happen. And now, Fabrizio Roman has confirmed to us that Manchester United is willing to obviously go for a permanent deal to close it in 
after Scott McTominay to Napoli goes well. For Scott McTominay, if you never knew, a 25 million euro bid is being discussed. And Manchester United are like, we're running short of time. And let's obviously get this deal in. Let's allow this money. After allowing this money, let us use it. Obviously, get in Manuel Ugate at the club of Manchester United. And where we've gone ahead to reach, it's really going to be what we call um, a very, very contagious state. Because Manchester United need a lot of things to do. You know, they have to do lots of things to obviously get this deal done and dusted. Today is a Sunday. We are heading into Monday. If we can get a here, we go tomorrow. And Fabrice and uh, Ugate travels to Manchester United, that will be really great. But that depends on to Scott McTominay. But it's it's a given. Scott McTominay is going to leave the club of Manchester United. He has already gone ahead to agree personal terms with the side of Napoli. And the only thing that can stop his deal is not really letting him go to Napoli. But according to Eric Ten Hag and Ineos, they all know the truth. And Eric Ten Hag is telling them Casemiro can't be the man to play into that midfield of Manchester United because... I need two energetic bodies to obviously track or hell everything. So it depends on Scott McTominay as it was on the deal of Matthias Delit and um as it was on the deal of Matthias Delit and um as it was on the deal of Matthias Delit and um and Mazurui. It all depended on Aaron and Bisak leaving the club of Manchester United. When the deal was really confirmed then obviously it was a huge no for that player to come in through and really join Manchester United. Now, no sooner, sorry, the earlier Scott McTominay agrees a deal to join Napoli, the earlier Manuel Ugate comes in through. And having gone ahead to lose to Liverpool, you know, lose to Brighton over the weekend, Eric Ten Hag is going to be pushing hard to see to that this deal gets sanctioned before Tuesday, such that this player can train with Manchester United for three days and Eric Ten Hag can throw him directly into that team. Even if he doesn't throw him in, he'll have to do the needful. He'll be like, he'll have a part to play into that game. Because it was evident that in that game of Brighton, if you throw in Manuel Ugate in that midfield, it's a different kind of game altogether. Because you take Manu to play as a number 10, and you get Manuel Ugate to play alongside Casemiro. If at all you wanted to keep Casemiro, all you would have went taken off Casemiro, get on Manuel Ugate to partner with Kobe Mainu, and then Bruno Fernandes stays into the number 10 role. That's exactly how I thought things would have gone ahead to happen for the club of Manchester United, and magic would have gone ahead, obviously, be done that way. So, Manuel Ugate deal is being considered permanent. No longer loan. And that depends on to Scott McTominay going to the side of Napoli, of which it's really very, very imminent. And I want to let you know that. Thank you for watching in this channel. And this is the United Matters channel. And I think Manchester United are really doing the best of the best. You know, they've gone ahead to set two ways of really signing Manuel Ugate. A loan with a mandatory obligation to buy all a, what is it called? All a all a permanent move so on either sides they are really balancing the pedals very well and united alike we are into this deal by the way this is great to set two avenues to sign a player but i think the easiest one is really gonna be that of manuel sorry that of elon sorry that of a permanent um that of a permanent buy a permanent purchase you know by Manchester United that most of us really want because when you get him in permanently it will be a given that you have him you know next season we won't be negotiating for anything else apart from moving on Casemiro and getting in another midfielder into that game of Manchester United in that team of Manchester United. meaning that if we get in or get on a permanent United will look to get in like one midfielder and if Kobe, Toby Collier doesn't get into the team, then those will be two. And I think another center forward will be looking to bring on um, maybe another number 10. If at all, uh, Mason Mount doesn't really perform very well. It might obviously put him on market to sell him to any other team that needs him. So a lot is going to be done next season. The left back situation is going to be assessed this season and see how things are really going to be happening. And for the right back situation, it's completed. Dalo and Mazurui are really going to be doing it for the club of Manchester United for the longest period of time possible. That is it. Because Dalo is 25 and Mazuru is 26, meaning that 
those two are really going to be given a benefit of doubt to be here for some time. For the left back, obviously, if Malasia and Luke Shaw, one of those doesn't really hit the standards, then we'll sell one and bring in one. Center backs, obviously, will be looking to bring in one or two center backs, the club of Manchester United, because Linderov, Harry Maguire, I know by the end of next season, sorry, in the next summer, they will be playing no part into the team of Manchester United. That is it. Meaning that if you lose out two or three with Johnny Evans, that means you'll be left with three center backs. That is Lisandro Martinez, Lenny Yoro, and Matthias Delit. Meaning that you'll be needing two center backs to be promoted into that team. Either we sign in uh, Gerard Breathwaite and get in and promote one player from the academy, or we get in two senior center backs. And as we all think that you're going to be playing in the Champions League next season, a lot is really going to be given a green light to see it that everything really comes to pass into the mix. Now, after that, Ten Hag has gone ahead and obviously talked about Kobe Maini, why he's really a special jam into the team of Manchester United. And in his words, he said, A perfect midfielder is one who is very good in attacking and very good in defending. He's a player who can do it and he can, and he can play as an attacking midfielder and as a holding midfielder. So, he has hinted onto two qualities that make Kobe Mainu a very good midfielder that I've gone ahead obviously pointed. The others are good, but this one is really good that a perfect midfielder is one who is good at very attacking and very good in defending. Now, relate this statement to Casemiro to obviously get to know why United is really interested into getting in Manuel Ugate because Ten Hag is telling you a perfect midfielder is one who is really good at defending and the one who is really good at um, attacking. Now, Casemiro is, by the way, ever since this season started, he has looked better going forward than really shielding the back for. And you need an Ugate into that midfield of Manchester United to shield that back for you, for you, to obviously do the needful. And Kobe Mainu, I think, is going to be unlocked if at all this guy comes in through. He's really going to make him one of the best midfielders in the world because Kobe Mainu is now going to be playing more of an attacking midfielder, like a box-to-box -box midfielder. Right now, he doesn't really commit a lot into the final third of the pitch because he knows to it that he's playing with a man who has vulnerable assets into this game. You get? So, that is Kazemiro. When he gets in an energetic, industrious player, relentless, you know, hard, who wins lots of balls, that is Manuel Ugate, then he's really going to enjoy his game. That's why he saw to it that when you're playing against Man City in the final of the FA Cup, he found himself in that position to score that goal because he had Amrabat with him into that midfield. Amrabat could obviously cover that space and he could give him assurance that even if you go forward, I'll really get this business done and dusted. You know, Casemiro has gone ahead to fall off the pace. You know, he has fallen off and uh, it's not in bad moods or in bad in bad uh, habits or bad spirits, but I believe we need to get in this one because he should be good at attacking and good at defending. And Manuel Ugate does it better because he can play. He's like Kobe Menu. He can play as a defensive midfielder. He can play as an attacking midfielder. As Eric Ten Hag is going to hate to say about it. You understand? So, thank you guys for that. And now, let's obviously come in through and talk about... Um, and talk about... Um, the Ganacho disallowed goal. Even Eric Ten Hag had something to say about it. He said, we can bring this goal back and explain it in detail and what should happen. But most importantly, we have an overload and we played in very good. Then it's about the final pass being in the right positions. Now, who makes this goal? Though it was really disallowed, but the way in which Manchester United went ahead to score a hit was really very, 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 very important because United finds itself in a position of really hitting Brighton on the break. Bruno gives it to Ahmad Diallo. Ahmad busts into space while dribbling that ball. And as he dribbles that ball, he finds himself in a position of really doing the needful. And what was the needful that he did? Releasing... Bruno. Bruno found a very final pass to um, Bruno found a very clear final pass.
to the side of uh, Ganacho. And as you see, Ganacho puts that ball in the back of the net. And guess who prevents it? It's the man himself known as um, known as Zekzi, you know? And Eric Ten Hag is like, we can talk or discuss that forever, but let's talk about the build-up. And you saw to it that very many of those have gone here to start to show up into the performances of Manchester United. And a lot is really looking okay for the club of Manchester United. So for me, I believe that um, a lot is really going to be happening at Manchester United. And the moment we get Manuel Ugate into that midfield, everything is going to go back to where we want it to be because we're going to be strong and our build-ups are really going to be very, very, very huge. But Amadi Diallo, I tell you, he's the man of the season. Clip out this. Amadi Diallo is the man of the season for the side of Manchester United. He's really going to win lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of things for the club of Manchester United. And get to note it that he's really going to be the main man doing the needful into the mix. So guys, thank you very much for watching through. I call upon for your reactions into the comment section below about Manuel Ugate to United permanent transfer push. Permanent transfer considered now or on the cards. What do you make about it? Kobe may knew why Eric Ten Hag loves him a lot. And the goal that went ahead, obviously, see cancelled out of Yoshua Zexi. May the living to God bless you abundantly. The Muslims, Baraklao Fikum, and the Christians, we thank God for the gift of life. Good night. See you later, but continue to subscribe because we want to hit 20,000 subscribers on this channel. And it's you to take us there. We are left with like 700 guys. Continue to subscribe. See to it that we hit that magic number. But the deal of Manuel Ugate is on a permanent push now not alone with an option to buy and obviously i'm going to be returning with the deal of scott mctominy that has to trigger this deal to obviously come to pass so it's a five finger salute you know i sign out see you later my lovelies bye bye